Right, hello everyone, welcome to another video in the electronic series. Um, in this video we're going to cover resistance, uh, wires, and power. All right, so this video is going to be uh, is going to be a mix of electronics principles and FRC practices. So here we go. Um, so in the, last, in the last video I covered how conduction works in metals. This is going to be a quick review. Um, so remember we have if we have a if you have a piece of copper wire. In the copper wire, we have a lattice of copper atoms, and the outer electrons um, of those copper atoms are free to move around in this free sea of electrons. And when you induce an electric field, right, the electrons start moving in what we call the drift direction, right? And it's this movement of charges, this movement of electrons that we call electricity, right? But these moving electrons do face some resistance, right? Uh, some, like a lot of them, they they'll transfer some of their energy to the protons. Right? And it's this transfer of energy to protons, which you call resistance in wire, right? So that's where resistance comes from. So what, what, what is resistance? So resistance is the measure of how easily electricity flows through a material, right? Um, and so if you guys remember from last time, we talked about potential difference. Potential difference is the amount of work that uh, each coulomb of charge can do. Um, and current is the number of coulombs that uh, coulombs of charge that pass a point per second. So our definition for resistance is the potential difference across a component divide the divided by the current in that component, right? Um, and so if you kind of boil that down to the variables, right? So R is our variable for resistance, V is our variable for, variable for potential difference, and I is a variable for current. Uh, so R equals V over I. And another name for this equation is called Ohm's law. So if you ever see someone talk about Ohm's law, this is what they're talking about. Okay. And the unit for resistance is ohms, denoted by the capital sigma, uh, or is that omega? I I have no I don't know my symbol. So whatever that is. Um, and so for controlling resistance in circuits, uh, engineers will frequently use something called resistors. Um, and these resistors are uh, just a thinly wounded wire around some ceramic. Um, and with this, you can control the, re the resistance in your circuits and kind of control the current or voltage output. Very useful things. Um, and if you look at these resistors right here, um, they have these kind of colored bands. Um, and these colored bands you can interpret through the chart above. All right, I'll let you do that in your own time. Okay. So just to kind of, kind of, just to kind of give you an example of resistance and voltage and current, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a story, right? This never happened, but it's a story nonetheless. Um, so this is back in 2019 FRC. Um, this is a robot right here. And part of the challenge is what that we had to suck in these basketball sized orange balls, right? And for the robot to detect that, we use something called a beam break sensor. And a beam break sensor is a look. It, it, you can see it on the right in the in on the image to the right. A beam break sensor consists of a transmitter and a receiver, right? So this transmitter is constantly uh, like emitting a beam of infrared light. And as long as the receiver is picking up the infrared light, it knows that there's nothing in between it. However, when this stops, when the receiver stops receiving this infrared light, it it detects that there's something in between it, and the robot can do something, right? Um, in the case of the 2019 robot, right, as soon as it detected the ball was inside the intake, it stopped running the intake, which makes sense, right? And if you guys want to kind of, kind of try to find it, the, in, the two beam brake sensors, one is here and one is here on the other side of the robot, right? So that's where, that's, that's where they were. Okay. So one of the problems we were having is that the transmitter, uh, the transmitter of the beam brake for our 2019 bot wasn't powerful enough, right? The receiver wasn't able to pick it up all the time. It's because it had, it had a little tiny infrared LED doing the transmitting, right? And so say we wanted to do an upgrade, right? So I look, I went on Amazon right before this video, right? Um, and I just cut, cut this into the PowerPoint presentation, all right? This is, this is an infrared LED. Um, and if I look down at the, at the, at the, spe at the specs of the LEDs, right? And as a forward voltage, of 1.2 to 1.5 volts, and a current of 20 mA ohms, and I'll, I'll explain what that is, right? Uh, but this is a just a IR uh, transmitter. Okay, so say we want to wire this transmitter, right? Uh, 
our Roborio is able to give us five volts of uh, power. I'll, I'll get into how we can, we can kind of really access that five volts of power in a later video. But say for now, we just have two wires coming out of the Rio that gives us five volts of power. Okay. So, uh, how are we going to wire this transmitter up, uh, without burning it and without ruining the Robo Rio so that we can, we can, we can use it properly. Okay. So we know it's forward voltage is 1.2 to 1.5 volts. And forward voltage is kind of the minimum operating voltage required to run the transmitter. So five volts is definitely above 1.5 volts. So we're, we're good there. Um, and then the second value we're going to look at is max current. Um, and I kind of messed up the slides here. Sorry about that. It should say max current is, uh, was it, uh, 20 milliamps, right? Let me double check. Yeah, 20 milliamps. So max current here is 20 milliamps. Sorry about that. Um, and so how, the way we're going to calculate the resistor we need to put in between our five volt power line and the LED is by using Ohm's law, right? So remember Ohm's law is R equals V over I. All right, if you plug in the values, we know we know we want our voltage to be, our voltage is five volts. And we want to limit the current to 20 milliamps. So we plug in the appropriate values, right? Resistance equals five volts over 0 0.02 amps. And if we solve, if we evaluate, we get R equals 250 ohms, right? So we, we ask, ask business to get the 250 ohm resistor, plug it in, and there we go. We have a working transmitter. All right, so that's our beam break upgrade example. Okay, and this is kind of beyond the scope of these videos, but if you're interested in this kind of thing, I highly recommend you look into series and parallel resistors. All right, they're really cool. It's a really cool concept, right? They allow us to use resistors in different ways to manipulate our voltage and current. Um, it's really it's pretty fascinating, so I would recommend you check it out. But if it's cool, if it's it's cool if you don't want to. All right. So now we're going to talk about resistance in wires. So we talked about resistors, um, but another big thing in FRC is the resistance in the wires themselves, right? So if you ever if you've ever looked at our, one of our FRC electronics boards, there's wires everywhere. We've used tons and tons of wires, right? So something we need to discuss is the resistance that goes into those wires. Um, and so whenever you build a bot, right, we always want to try to reduce resistance in the electronics as much as possible, because by reducing the resistance. We give, we have more power available for the motors and for our main mechanisms and our battery can last a little longer, right? So reducing resistance is always a, is always a plus. And so when you talk about resistance in wires, there's three influencing factors, right? Uh, the first is the resistivity of the material, right? So all of our, all of our wires we use are copper, right? So that's pretty standard in the net way. So we can't really control the resistivity of our material. Uh, the second part is the cross-sectional area of the wire, so how thick the wire is, right? Um, and the third is the length of the wire, so how long is our wire? The longer the wire is, the more resistance you're going to have, right? Um, and so for the for those who are more mathematical, like have a more math mathematically minded, I don't know if that's a thing, but for those who like equations, um, here's the equation that kind of determines resistance in wires. Um, so resistance is rho, which is our resistivity times length, right? Uh, all over area. So you can see that as you increase, uh, the cross sectional area, the resistance decreases, right? So you always want to, in high current applications, you always want to use a thicker wire. Okay. Um, and so wire thickness is measured in gauge or gauge. I don't really know how to pronounce that, right? The acronym is for, uh, acronym for gauge is American wire gauge. Or gauge. I'm gonna just say gauge. Um, and AWG is kind of just used in America because they're special. Uh, the metric countries uses millimeter square millimeters because they're they're actually smart. Um, and so uh, for batteries, for FRC batteries, we this year we use four gauge wires. Uh, for motors, we use twelve gauge. And for other connections like between controllers and the like, CAN connections, which we'll talk about later on, we use eighteen gauge wire. Um, and gauge matters for the current load. So we know the wires coming out of the batteries, there's going to be a lot of current flowing through those wires. So you need a thicker wire to be able to, uh, to be able to, to be able to handle the, uh, increased current load. All right. Sorry about the cut. My laptop just crashed, but, uh, we were talking about wire gauge and what happens is that when you choose an inappropriate gauge for your, for your wires, uh, when the, when the electricity flows through, 
uh, the thinner wire, it bombards the, the protons um, and starts heating up. And when the wire heats up too much, it will melt and kind of destroy all your electronics. So you don't want that to happen. Remember, choose the appropriate gauge for your for the appropriate application, right? Um, and so smaller gauge, so four gauge means thicker wire. Lar la larger gauge means thinner wire, right? It's kind of reverse. Okay. The final thing I want to talk about is power. Okay, so this is useful in FRC. This is just useful in life in general. Um, so power, you probably, if you probably only know this, if you've taken a, any general physics or physics course at Skyline, uh, but power is energy transferred per unit time. Um, and the kind of the electrical definition for power is potential difference times current. So P equals V times I. If you've taken general physics, you know uh, that the units for power is watts or W. Okay. And so this chart kind of combines all the equations we've learned so far, right? Uh, from back in the first video with the uh, potential difference and current, um, and this video with uh, power and Ohm's law. This kind of combines everything into a wheel. Don't bother like memorizing this. It's just, uh, just to show you how many different variations of the equations we can make. Um, and so, on, on the, you can ask, like, why is power important? Why do I care, right? So if you've if you ever gone to a store and bought a light bulb, right, it'll give you a power rating. Like this, this light bulb is 60 watts, right? Well, what you can, what you, like, what that means is that it, con, it consumes 60 joules of energy per second, right? So that's how, that's how hungry your light bulb is. Um, and if you're kind of want to reduce the electricity bill, you want to, you want to pick a light bulb that, Yes, provides a, the, a sufficient, sufficient amount of brightness for you, but also doesn't use that much electricity, right? So lower lower wattage is better for light bulbs. And wattage also has an application when you choose electronic parts. So when you choose components for your circuits and for your electronics, you need to be sure it's rated appropriately for the power of the application, right? So remember, remember before we were talking about the resistors, right? Um, the 250 ohm resistor for the, the beam break upgrade. Um, and that little itty bitty resistor is probably the size of your fingernail, right? So it's only, it's only meant to operate within three watts, right? So three watts is where it's good. However, if I want to do something beyond three watts, I risk of burning the component. Uh, so say, say I have a 10 watt application. So I have to use this kind of finger length size 250 ohm resistor for, to be able to handle that increased power load. All right. So, be sure to be sure your components are able to handle the power load you you apply to it. Okay, just a quick overview. We covered a lot in this video. Resistance is determined by Ohm's law, which is uh, R equals V over I. Um, and the way we control kind of the way resistance is determined in wires is first of all with the with the material, uh, the gauge. So we remember we use four gauge for battery, twelve gauge for motors, and eighteen gauge for all the other connections. And the resistance also de determined by length. So we kind of want to reduce the length as much as possible to reduce our resistance. All right. Uh, we also have power. We also talk about power. So power is voltage times current. And when you choose your electrical components, you need to be sure they can handle the power requirements. Another another thing we'll, we'll look at with power is when we start analyzing motor curves later on in the series, right? Uh, knowing what power is and knowing what it means will be very useful. Alrighty. So here I'm going to jump into some example problems, right? Um, if you, if you aren't able to figure them out, don't worry. As long as you get the gist of the concepts, you'll be fine. Uh, but if you want to try these, the first one is, um, wanting to restrict a 12 volt power supply to 200 milliamps. Mr. Walid adds a 60 ohm resistor. Um, is this correct? So is the 60 ohm resistor correct? Um, and the second question is, what is the resistance of a 10 meter uniform 18 gauge copper wire? Um, assuming that 18 gauge, 18 gauge wires diameter is one millimeter. Um, and the, and, and that the resistivity of copper is 1.7 times 10 to the minus eight ohm meters. So give me a few, few seconds to pause. All right. So let's get into the answers, right? So for the first one, we're just going to use Ohm's law. Uh, resistance equals voltage over current. Plug in the values we know. So we know the voltage is 12 volts and the current is 0 0.2 amps. And we get an answer of 60 ohms. So Mr. Wally, this correct. 60 ohm resistor is the appropriate uh, value. 
Oh, I kind of messed up the name there. Mr. Balloon. I mean, Mr. Wadid. I messed up the names. My bad. All right. Um, and for the second one, uh, the first thing we need to do is calculate cross-sectional area. So I, I only gave you diameter. So you want to run some a uh, area because pi r squared to figure out the cross-sectional area. And right, we get the cross-sectional area of 7.8510 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Uh, and then we use our equation that we discussed earlier. Uh, the resistance is uh, the resistivity times the length all over area. Uh, plug in the values we know. All right, we have that, uh, that I've given in the last slide. And we get a resistance of 0 0.22 ohms. All right. And you can kind of see with this example problem that the length of the wire, it doesn't really matter that much for the resistance going through. It's more of an idea of wire management and interference, electromagnetic infer interference, which we'll cover in later videos. All right, so that's that. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. I know I've had a great day so far, and I'll see you in the next video.